Hey, in this video, I will show you the entire process of creating a model that generates piano music. This process involves the following steps. First, we need to collect the data and convert this data into numbers. Afterward, we are going to build the model and train it using the data. Finally, the last step will be to generate examples and listen to them. You can check out examples of generated music at the end of this video. But remember that it's just a starting point and it could be even much better. I will be using a couple of libraries during this video. Music21 to work with MIDI files, NumPy to work with multi-dimensional arrays, and Keras to build and train the model. Without further ado, let's get started. Our first step is to find lots of MIDI files. For example, if you want to use Chopin's works, you can just Google. And there are many websites where you can download them for free. Choose a random one, and here we go, there are many different MIDI files. But actually, I would recommend using soundtracks from movies. Because classical music is really complicated and the melodies there aren't that clear, but it's up to you. Once you download enough files, you need to parse them into numbers. Here I imported all required libraries. By the way, as usual, a link to the code in the description. I will keep all the MIDI files in the folder called data. Let's create a list of the file names in this folder that end with a dot mid. And let's display this variable to make sure that everything works correctly. It works, we have a list of MIDI files. Now I will create a function to extract all the nodes from the MIDI files and it will return a list of these nodes. Nodes is the list that we will return. Let's iterate through all the files. And I want to print the name of the file so that if something goes wrong, we can understand which file is causing the issue. Now we need to get all the nodes from the file. Your music 21 will help us. Each element of this array could represent either a single node or a chord. For chords, I will represent them as nodes separated by a dot. Let me illustrate it by an example. But actually, I'm not going to use letters for the nodes. Instead, each node will represent a number. It's easy to do with the pitches in Music21. So let's finish the code for this function. You can simply call this function to obtain a list of nodes. However, I want to save them as a file. I will check if the nodes file in the data directory exists. I'm doing it right here. And if it does, I will upload the data from this file. Otherwise, I will call the function to retrieve all the nodes and save them as a file. So let's run this code and if everything is correct, we will get a list of nodes. It took almost two minutes and here we go. There are many issues with my files, but this is just warnings. So I'm gonna pretend that everything is completely fine. And now that we have all the data, we need to convert it to input and output arrays for our LSTM neural network. If you are unfamiliar with this process, I recommend watching my last video where I covered this topic. But basically here, sequence length is the number of nodes in the input array and the next node for this sequence is the output array. But before going forward, let's make sure that our nodes array looks good looks pretty much as I expected it to be. And here I created a mapping between the array of nodes and numbers. For each node, you can juxtapose a number and vice versa. For each number, you can juxtapose a node. In mathematics, it's called a bijection. I hope the image explains it well. And here's the code that creates our input and output sequences. Now that the input and output arrays are prepared, we can proceed to build and train the model. Here are some constant values to define. 
And here's the pod. It creates a neural network with multiple layers. Additionally, it incorporates dropout and batch normalization to potentially enhance generalization. Note that I am using a model checkpoint to save the model after each epoch if the value of the loss function decreases. It's actually pretty cool because first, you can generate music while your model is training using the best version of your model and second, you can interrupt this process and continue it later. And let's train this model. I forgot to run some code, let's do it. And now it is completely fine, so let's train our model. It might take a while, just to be more precise, on my machine it took approximately 15 hours to complete this process. Now it's time for the last step, which is to generate music. You can do it in another window to avoid interrupting the training. First we need to load our model with the following command. And once we have our model, we have different options. First, we can continue the training process. I mean, now we can just call the fit method and it will continue the training process. But now I want to generate a song. So for this, I need to create an input array for our model. And I'm going to use the same code as for training to generate an array of possible sequences. I'm doing it right here. And then I'm just going to choose a random sequence as my input for creating a new song. Once you have an input sequence, you can predict the next note for this sequence. Afterward, you need to add this prediction to the sequence and delete the first note from the sequence to predict it again. Continue this process until you become tired. Also, during the process of generating a song, you can see some information regarding which note is generated and you can see what this note is precisely. So we are approaching the final step, which is to convert these notes into a MIDI file. If you want to learn how to change the intervals between notes, how to adjust the sound and the duration of each note, check out my playlist on algorithmic music generation using the Music21 library. Because you can do a lot of different stuff, you can convert these notes into different songs, and actually it's pretty much simple. So now we can convert and our file is called output.mid. In the future, I will try to change the architecture of this model and train it using different data. To stay updated, consider subscribing to my channel. Now let's listen to some results and see you in the next video.